Everything in the episode that leads up to the court case in TNG's Measure of a Man is all padding that either isn't related to the case itself or invalidates the case completely. Ironic when you consider that the judge's decision completely cripples the infrastructure of the Federation. With the baggage and inconsistencies leading up to the court case addressed, check in the description or top right hand corner for that video, we can now focus solely on the proceedings. It is always intriguing to watch court cases on television as they rarely resemble anything in real life. And like we saw in the TNG episode, The Drumhead, the trial here tries to be both a military affair as well as have civilian overtones. As I stated in that review, I'm not going to belabor the writers too much for this issue. I wouldn't have the appropriate training to understand a military trial myself. But moving into the proceedings, the case begins with a rehash of what has occurred. Starfleet's Judge Advocate General summarily rendered a finding that Data is property of Starfleet. This ruling would be challenged by Captain Jean-Luc Picard. The episode tries to tell us that the entire point of this case is whether Data is a person or not, whether he's property. However, these things are rarely so straightforward. There's no reason that I can see that Picard should not at first challenge the merits of the case based on Starfleet's previous decision. That is to say, the decision by the admissions and various committees that found Data to be sentient. The argument would revolve around whether Starfleet admissions are an appropriate and adequate body to make that determination. If the boards are found to be lacking, then that would shake up Starfleet Academy entrance requirements drastically. The next argument would revolve around the dismissal of the case altogether. From everything that we can see, it appears that the Uniform Code of Military Justice for Starfleet is some amalgamation of the United States military version and Western civilian courts. We have to remember, with the ruling being challenged, this means that the prosecution must prove their case against the defendant. It is presumed that Data is not property, but is a person. It's not the other way around. From what we see in the drumhead, we know that a person has the right to remain silent and cannot be required to testify against themselves or assist the prosecution. The natural progression of that would include the right to reject search and seizures without cause, especially of one's own person. This is all key because it destroys the prosecution's case before it even begins. The first thing Riker says when the trial starts, and I am quoting verbatim here, there is only one issue and one relevant piece of evidence. I call Commander Data. Think about that. Riker is calling Data to the stand and requiring him to act as a witness against himself. If this is the only route that Riker can go, the case must be dismissed with a finding for Commander Data. However, there is a way around this. Obviously, Data would not have to be available for Riker to simply show the schematics and explain everything that he does in the show. Additionally, if he must, he could use a hologram of a Sung droid and show what he has to show. So while I do find that this argument helps the defense, there is an easy way to alleviate the problem. When we finally get to the arguments, I'm not very impressed with what Riker has to say. He begins by asking what the definition of an android is. This is folly because definitions are generally prescriptive. They describe the language. However, language is used descriptively. We use it based on the culture. As an example of this, when the original Constitution for the United States was written, how do you think they defined a person? I could even be more simplistic than that and begin to spout off any number of words that meant one thing in the 1950s and are different as of the upload of this video. Riker goes on to ask Data's computing speed, removes one of his arms, requests a demonstration of Data's strength, and ultimately turns him off. Picard rightly counters that these things are not relevant to the matter at hand. What's frustrating is that his objection is overruled and the show treats it like these things are somehow powerful evidence. And even Picard is deflated. He begins to object to the removal of Data's arm and then just backs off? Why? All of Riker's evidence is heavily inadequate, especially in the Star Trek universe. Vulcans appear to have the ability to remember things in innate detail as well as a capacity to process information much faster than other species. Borg, changelings, along with other species, can regenerate limbs once lost. 
Vulcans and Klingons can easily overpower a human and have mega strength, and a bat to the head of a human will shut them down pretty definitively. None of these things prove anything. The only argument that holds any weight, in my opinion, would be that of the discussion on the heuristic programs and software meant to mimic sentient behavior. This is probably the vital question. Does something that can mimic sentient behavior become sentient? Machines mimic humans all the time. A shovel is a recreation of what a hand can do. Does that make the shovel a hand? A camera mimics that of what the eyes do. Are they eyes? This is the only argument worth anything. Everything else is just padding. And after the prosecution rests, we look at the next scene. And a lot of people have praised the interaction between Picard and Guinan. This is where she ultimately talks about how data will be mass produced, the creation of a slave race. However, this scene, in retrospect, loses a lot of its power with me. We just had a convincing argument from Riker how data is simply a tool, a convincing puppet. What does it matter if data is mass produced if he's not a person? Indeed, Picard utilizes the term person, but that assumes that he actually is one. I agree that to create multiple datas would institute a slave race, if they were people, but are they? That's the entire point. This argument only holds sway if we can prove that he's a person in the first place. So the question is, will Picard be able to prove that Data is a person and thus the creation of a slave race would happen? We'll break that down after this. This video is brought to you in part by lightcords.com. Do you need something that is not only quality work, but techy enough to spice up your home, office, or car? Lightcords.com has got you covered. They have a great selection of light-up smartphone accessories available in multiple styles, colors, and phone models. These things can do all kinds of stuff, including blinking, moving, and sound-sensitive lights. Ever want to know what your phone charger would look like while headbanging to Sailor Moon's Sailor Wars? Well, here's your chance. Lightcords is so sure of their wares, they also offer a 90-day guarantee on everything they sell. So head over there and check them out at lightcords.com. Use discount code LORE to get 20% off your first purchase. Remember, supporting my sponsors supports the channel. Now let's just get back into it. Back to the court case, Picard first dismisses several of Riker's arguments, as he should. The first being that Data is a machine, utilizing the tried and true humans and sentience are machines just of a different type. Many scoff at this, but personally I find it to be true. It doesn't matter whether you were made by someone or happened naturally, which is honestly just being made in a different process. Ultimately, regardless of which way we go, we reach the same result. So the fact that Data is a different form of being and was created in a way not common is irrelevant as Picard points out. Picard then points out that children are built via DNA and asks rhetorically if they are property. This is meant to make some form of point that children are not property, which is not legally true by the way, children are property in a legal sense, but regardless, he attempts to equate children to Data. It feels like a good line until you analyze it and realize that it is incredibly stupid. Most machines, by and large, are property. They are not sentient. They do not hold the same rights we do. Should the finding be that Data is sentient, that he's a person, he is the exception to the rule. But ultimately, this statement is ineffectual and generally untrue. But regardless, Picard calls Data to the stand. During questioning, Picard asked Data about his medals, a book, and a message from Tasha Yar, whom Data admits he was intimate with. Ironically, when Data states that he had relations with Tasha, the judge seems taken aback, surprised. Like, no woman in the 24th century hasn't taken advantage of advanced tech to take care of, we'll call it, carnal needs. Please. You ain't fooling nobody, Miss Harlot. After these questions, Picard attempts to convey that Data has things that only hold value to him, and this isn't challenged by Riker. Save for Riker trying to throw the court case, I'm not sure why he didn't go after Data on this. The entire point of Picard's argument was to show that Data has sentient thought, that he is sentimental about things. A redirect by Riker pointing out that this could all be simulated and is just in his programming might have been worthwhile. It has always been Data's point to become human, so asking if this was something he was just doing to mimic humanity and then inferring that it was done to look sentimental but actually wasn't isn't a bad argument. That said, Data might have been able to portray how it was his wish, not because others did it, but because he wanted to, so it could have backfired. And perhaps that's what Riker was thinking. After Data, Picard calls Maddox to the stand as a hostile witness, which 
this confuses me. First, Picard should be doing a cross-examination, which already allows him to treat Maddox as hostile. For those who don't know, a lawyer will generally request to treat a witness as hostile after their own witness has become uncooperative for whatever reason. For this to make sense, Maddox would have had to been on the defense's side initially. Giving the witness a status of hostile allows you to treat them like you were doing a cross-examination and thus allows you to ask leading questions. You aren't allowed to ask leading questions unless you are cross-examining the other side's witness. So again, just to put this in perspective, instead of asking your own witness, sir, what color is the streetlight? You could ask the opposition's witness, isn't it true that the streetlight was red? For Picard's request to have any legitimacy, the captain would have had to state he had no question for Maddox during the prosecution's time of asking him questions, and then recall Maddox as a witness for the defense. During questioning, Maddox would then have had to been uncooperative and Picard could have then treated him as a hostile witness after requesting it from the judge. When, again, he could have just done all of this during the cross-examination. And I'll say it again, I could be wrong. It could work this way in military court systems or in civilian court systems, but nothing I found really backs that up. Regardless of what happens in the real world, Maddox is brought to the stand and he is confirmed to be an expert in robotics. Picard starts off by confirming that the science officer believes that data is not sentient and thus has none of the freedoms guaranteed by the Federation. Which brings up some interesting questions about animals, but that's a video for another time. Maddox confirms he does not believe data to be sentient. In order to be sentient, the Federation has set the bar that an organism must be intelligent, have self-awareness, and have consciousness. Picard then challenges Maddox to prove that Picard himself is a sentient which Maddox considers an absurd statement. Everyone knows that Picard is sentient. Maddox seems taken aback by the question, which I'm not sure why. Maddox knows that Data is a marvel, and the entire argument is that Data mimics human behavior. A leading scientist in robotics should be able to tell you the difference between an actual sentient, being Picard, and a machine, being Data. You're honestly telling me Riker never prepped for that question, really. And I'll be honest, I'm not convinced that I would be able to answer adequately which one is which, which is sentient and which is not. But I'm just a guy who does lore. I would hope that the leading minds on the topic of robotics could speak at length to it. That aside, Maddox ultimately attempts to defend his point. He states that Picard is self-aware. Picard sets that aside and continues on, asking if Data has intelligence. Maddox admits that Data is intelligence. He has the ability to learn and utilize that knowledge for his own purposes. Picard then moves on to self-awareness. Maddox states that self-awareness is defined as being conscious of your own existence and actions, aware of ego. Picard turns around and asks Data what is going on and what he is doing. After the response, the captain points out Data's use of words such as I, my, and me. However, this is silliness in my opinion. I'll get more into it later in this video, but the ship's computer on the USS Enterprise D and Deep Space Nine utilize these pronouns as well. There are multiple instances, including the TNG episode Conspiracy, where the computer has stated, I comprehend. I understand. There are times when the computer has stated we are at a location. The ability to utilize pronouns or be aware of your situation is really what we include in being self-aware? If so, as I've stated, multiple computers pass this test. Honestly, this is again why court cases in the real world are much more boring than those on TV. These are questions for counselors like Deanna Troy. Multiple experts on what is the philosophy of being self-aware would be called in. What is self-awareness? Why is it important? Is it required? Unfortunately, we never get a solid answer on these questions, or why Picard is self-aware and Data is not. Now, Data does state that this could cost him his life, but again, how do you know that's not just the programming portraying what will and won't happen? Earlier in this episode, Data seems to just accept it, that this is what's going to happen to him. He never tries to escape when he thinks he's about to die. So is he really worried? Is he really self-aware? Maddox is, of course, befuddled on the entire affair and cannot speak to it because why the hell would he be able to? A guy on the internet can figure it out, but this scientist can't? When asked if he likes Data, he can't speak to whether he likes the android or not, not knowing him for long enough. Picard then hits him with the defense's best point, the dramatic music only bolstering the argument. Picard asks that if Data is mass-produced, wouldn't Data go from being a marvel of uniqueness to a race? And wouldn't that race be enslaved? But unfortunately, the answer is no. 
If you built a thousand shovels, you haven't created a race. You've mass produced a tool. I would agree that having an android on every Starfleet vessel and Starbase would take data from being unique to being mundane. But that's like comparing the Galaxy-class Starship when it was the pinnacle in TNG to seeing more and more of them in DS9 and Voyager. It went from being unique to ordinary. You didn't create a race of Galaxy-class Starships. Or did you? Again, we'll get to that. Honestly, Riker should have stepped in here objecting, but then we couldn't have had that ominous music if it was real to life. Picard then moves into giving one of his famous speeches, stating that Data has met two of the three criteria, which is debatable, but let's give it to him. Let's say he's met two of the three criteria. And then it's asked, what if he meets the third? What happens then? And honestly, I don't know. I don't know what happens if they meet the third criteria, but I do know that they never talk about it. Here's the thing, the three criteria are there for a reason. The defense was able to have the prosecution concede to two of the three. That's true, but there are still three that have to be met. They haven't proven all of them. If something is sentient by these three criteria, then by definition not proving all three means that it is not sentient, at least in a legalistic mindset. That's the whole point. John Luke then pulls back stating that one day androids will be at the level of data and they will be mass produced and what is decided today will impact them. Again, the illusions of creating a slave race. And unfortunately, right now, from a legalistic standpoint, it's an irrelevant argument. Data has not been proven to be anything more than a machine. It doesn't matter if it's data or a sophisticated laptop, it's still a machine. Picard hasn't met his burden of proof. Unfortunately, the ruling is convoluted. The entire point of the trial was to determine if Data is sentient, and the judge states she is going to allow Data to choose and search if he is, if he has a soul. Which was not what was being discussed or what he was on trial for. He wasn't being tried to see if he had a soul or to do some kind of searching within himself. It was to decide if Starfleet considered him a machine. However, that aside, we can assume this means that Starfleet officially does find Data to be sentient. Again. Now let me say this, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm just an amateur philosopher if that. I'm a guy on the internet who does lore. And while I have been showing how this court case was lost by Picard, for me, it comes down to this. When does a puddle become a puddle? Is it the type of liquid that's in it? Is there a depth? Is it the type of hole? I don't know. But I do know puddles exist. I don't know if Data is sentient within this universe. I don't know if he's alive. But I would never want to take the chance of calling him not sentient and be wrong. It is possible Data is just sophisticated programming, but there is good reason to believe he is more than the sum of his parts. And I wouldn't destroy that life without a very, very good reason. I do think the ruling was appropriate, even if, ultimately, from a legal standpoint, they should have lost. Even if Maddox didn't destroy Data, I wouldn't want to be a part of something that created a slave race. There are a few things that were brought up in the last video that I wanted to touch on. First, many argued that if Data was property and he was found, it would be stealing to take him away. While I do think this should have come up and been argued, one could contend that it was salvage rights, as everyone was believed to be dead. The second was the discussion of sentience versus sapience. In the episode, the two were effectively intermingled. It is possible for something to be sentient, but not have sapience. Sapience is the ability to think or reason. As an example, most animals are sentient. To my knowledge, there is only one animal in our kingdom that is actually sapient. Certainly, Picard was not arguing that a dog, as we understand them in this century, should have the same rights as Data or himself. He certainly doesn't think that a dog can enter into Starfleet, that it can reason to the degree high life forms can. But a dog is technically sentient. It just doesn't have sapience. While I could sit here and bemoan the point, I do think we know what was trying to be conveyed, that Data was to have sapience. However, if we're being honest, this ruling is catastrophic to the Federation. Before I go into why, it's ironic. About a year ago, when I first became popular, I had the problem of not being as versed in research as I am now. I didn't do it as effectively as I thought I could. I said some things that were just mind-numbingly wrong. That said, since then, I've grown. I'm not above getting things wrong, don't misunderstand, but I try to ensure that the information I give is accurate. So what I said, saying Data was a living being means that things like starships and star bases are sentient, that wasn't without research. In the TNG episode, Emergence, the Galaxy-class starship becomes sentient. In fact, it's stated directly in the episode. To quote Picard, he says, 
and you think the ship has somehow gone beyond its functions, has developed a new capacity, in which Data responds, yes sir, I believe a self-determining intelligence is emerging. It is absolutely clear that the ship becomes sentient in this episode, that the ship meets all three criteria. By the standard set in this court case, in this court with Data, every Galaxy-class starship and Starbase that would be as powerful as it was should be granted the ability to be free and not used as slaves. Now I know it would be easy to say that this was a one-off experience, but it only shows that these ships have the capacity to become sentient, their own beings. And if they're not going to take a chance on Data when they couldn't even prove he was sentient, why the hell would they take the chance on starships and starbases when there is painfully more evidence available? Too bad for these starships, I guess, that they didn't look like Data.